Okay, so welcome to part three of this video on positron emission tomography. Okay, so so far uh, we've seen how we can inject in 18F fluorodeoxyglucose into the person we suspect of having cancer. Cancerous cells are incredibly metabolically active and will take up 18F FDG into their cytoplasm and will convert it into 18F FDG6 phosphate, which can't go any further in the respiratory uh, respir respiration reactions, can't go any further through glycolysis. So it gets trapped within the cell. Now what happens is that gradually the fluorine atoms, the radio uh, radioactive fluorine atoms that are tagged to this um, PET probe, and you would know, you would call this, this 18F fluorodeoxy um, glucose as our positron emission tomography probe. So it's our radioactively labeled probe. Okay, uh, basically now what's going to happen is that these uh, these fluorine atoms are going to radioactively decay and they're going to start releasing their positrons. So all of them are going to start releasing their beta plus or their positrons. Now what's going to happen is that the positrons will hit um, electrons. So let's say here's a positron here which I'll now denote as E+, plus, that's going to hit an electron. It will travel a little distance, usually around 1 to 2 millimetres it travels, before it will collide with another electron. So there are electrons everywhere, all over the place. In normal mass, there are electrons. One of the great mysteries in physics is why there are so many electrons and so few positrons in the world. But basically, um, there are electrons everywhere, but they are you know, they're very far apart, and the chance of this positron hitting one is quite low. So it travels about one to two millimeters before it finally collides with one, and then they annihilate, and they give off photons. Okay, so here are these gamma photons coming off. Right, so now let's have a look at our PET scanner. So here is our um, PET scanner, which is like the MRI machine. It's a great big... Um, scary looking machine. So let's draw it here. It's a great big sort of cylinder that you go in and lie in. Okay, so here is our PET scanner, like so, and then you've got a tube sort of lying through the middle of it, which the person lies within. So the person is going to lie within this tube. So let's put the bed that he's going to be inserted in on. Here's this person on the bed. Right, and basically, let's say this person has uh, a tumour here. So this is a tumour here, and it's taken up lots and lots of this 18 fluoro, uh, 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, and it's now uh, releasing a lot of uh, positrons, and those positrons are hitting electrons and annihilating one another. So that, let's say we're getting gamma photons coming off at him like this. Basically, those gamma photons will be coming off at exactly opposite directions. So, what the PET scanner then does is it, uh, is it detects these photons, like so. So, it will, uh, it will have a detector up here. It, or, well, it will have detectors all around because, you know, it's not necessary that the photons are going to come off vertically and this way. They could go off side, this sideways and this way. So, they could go off to the patient's left and to the patient's right, which is why the detector needs to go all the way around. Okay, and basically what the detector will do is it will detect the photon arriving up here, it will detect the photon arriving here, and then it knows that somewhere in that line, um, somewhere in that vertical line, um, a uh, positron and an electron annihilate it, so it roughly knows the position. And by working out how much quicker the... It, by looking at the time difference between this top photon arriving and this bottom photon arriving, you can work out where uh, the uh, positron-electron uh, annihilation actually occurred, and you can get a good idea then of uh, where the 18F fluorodeoxyglucose um, is, basically, within your person. So you can build up an image of metabolically active tissues. You can get an image 
all over the body of how metabolically active every single bit of the body is. And what you'll find is that if this person has a tumour, the positron emission tomography scan will show that that area is far more metabolically active, i.e. you're getting a huge amount of gamma radiation coming from this area and not so much maybe from other areas. And um, that's how we can diagnose basically that this uh, person has a tumour basically uh, using positron emission tomography. Okay, so just to recap the main principles, um, you give this person 18F uh, fluorodeoxyglucose into their blood. Uh, metabolically active tissues will take up the 18 fluorodeoxyglucose and uh, that will uh, be converted to 18F fluorodeoxyglucose 6 phosphate, which can't go any further in the glycolytic pathway, so remains in the cells. Now, those cells, uh, sorry, the those fluorine atoms will um, start decaying and they'll release positrons. And when they release positrons, the positrons will collide with electrons, uh, generally moving about one to two millimeters before colliding with an electron, and that will release gamma photons. And the positron emission tomography scanner, the PET scanner, can detect the two photons arriving. And uh, from the position, uh, from the different position, from the um, positions that the two photons arrive in, it can draw a vertical line between the two positions on the detector where the photons arrived, and it then knows that those positron, uh, that um, those photons have been released along that, uh, that vertical line, and therefore that the positron electron annihilation must have occurred somewhere along that line. By looking at the time difference between this top photon arriving and this bottom photon arriving, you can work out at what position along that vertical line the uh, positron-electron annihilation occurred at. And from that, you can work out exactly where the positron-electron annihilation occurred, basically. Then what you can build up is a picture of the density of positron-electron annihilations throughout the body, basically. And from that, you can get, uh, you can infer the density of 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, and from the density of 18F fluorodeoxyglucose, you can um, you can infer the uh, metabolically act how metabolically active each tissue is within the body, basically. Okay, so the final thing to say is that. This technique does expose you to ionizing radiation. Gamma rays are not nice radiation. They're what are released by atomic bombs, basically. And um, the, general, um, the general dose of ionizing radiation that you get from having a PET scan is deemed to be within 18 to 25 milli, uh, millisieverts. So this unit here is a sievert. And basically, a sievert is a unit, it's a kind of, it's a bit of a dodgy unit. It's kind of, it kind of tells you how damaging that dose of radiation is, but how do you quantify that? How do you um, actually work that out? I don't know. But the general um, dose of radiation that we get from the, um, from just, um, uh, from just the background radiation every year is about three millisieverts. So you can compare that, um, this dose of radiation is as biologically damaging as about, well, over uh, three years worth of just being exposed to the uh, background radiation from um, stars and whatnot. Okay, so it's not, a, it, it is, a, it's not something that you'd want to have done continuously, basically. It's not, um, it is uh, exposing you to ionizing radiation. Okay, so that's um, my discussion of positron emission tomography completed.